We are under a month away from the 2024 NFL Draft, so I figured this would be a good time to highlight some of my favorite prospects from this class. Not including the obvious guys I love like Caleb Williams, Malik Neighbors, or Brock Bowers, we'll keep this a little more outside the top 10. And leave your favorite prospects in the comments, I'm definitely interested to see what everybody else thinks. Number 1, Brian Thomas Jr. It seems like there's a consensus top 3 wide receivers with MHJ, Neighbors, and Adunze. Wide receiver for though is a bit more subjective. For me, it's easily Brian Thomas Jr. He was a part of that three-headed monster that LSU displayed during the 2023 season and worked his way into being a first-round pick. Thomas has a great mix of size, speed, and explosiveness. His 6'3 frame and 4.3340 time could make him a game-changer in the right offense. It helped that Jaden Daniels was dropping dimes deep to him, but Brian Thomas Jr. did a great job getting behind the defense almost every time. His main flaw is probably the lack of broken tackles, but he does have enough shiftiness to his game where he can make guys miss and still pick up some yak. There were a couple of concentration drops in there, even one during his pro day, but he does make up for it with some sensational grabs. He could be better at sinking his hips when running certain routes like digs and outs, but on moves that require one cut like slants or post, corners, nine routes, he's fantastic. Thomas is the type of guy who can raise a ceiling for any offense he enters. For his sake, I hope his future quarterback throws a good deep ball. Number two, another receiver, Ricky Pearsall. Pearsall is probably known for having one of the greatest catches I've ever seen last season, but he's more than just one highlight play. He came in at 6'1", 190 pounds, and put together some ridiculous combine scores. His 40, shuttle, vertical, broad jump, and three cone were all in the 80th percentile or better for wide receivers. Unlike Brian Thomas, I have no concerns for Pearsall route running. He knows how to set up his defender and get open. As you can tell by his highlight catch, he has no fear of catching a ball in traffic. He's a slot receiver with great hands, but if you wanted to stick him outside, he can probably do that too. He's good after the catch, he'll make some fantastic catches, and he plays through contact with ease. For the concerns, he's already 23, he doesn't have elite breakaway speed, and he does have shorter arms. But I do think whoever gets him in round 3 or 4 will be happy with what they get, and he should be able to contribute right away. Malik Washington may end up being a slot only type of receiver, but he can be really good if given the chance. He may only be 5'9", but he's built and plays way bigger than what he's listed at. Washington has quick feet and knows how to get open, and he's a sure-handed receiver. While his size is not ideal for a wide receiver, it's very similar to another prospect I loved last year, and that's Zay Flowers. Their playing styles may be different because Zay is way more explosive, while Malik plays a more violent style of football, but it's something about seeing a 5'9 slot receiver with the number 4 that's giving me some flashbacks. Even though his standing height is not too impressive, it does not mean he can't go up and get it. Washington had an insane vertical leap at 42 and a half inches at the combine, which was the best recorded for anybody at this year's combine. He may be a late day 2 or even day 3 pick due to his lack of size and versatility, and his long speed is not a game changing type level. But for a guy who can get open and not afraid to go over the middle and is tough to bring down, there should be a role for him in the NFL. While there's no generational back in this class, it's still an intriguing bunch overall. Trey Benson to me seems like a complete back. He's built like a workhorse at 6 feet tall, 216 pounds, he ran in the 4 threes at the combine, which wasn't shocking by the way and definitely backs up what you see on film when he runs away from defenders. He is a little stiff and will never be viewed as an elite receiver, but when you can get a blend of tough running and explosiveness like that, it's tough to look past it. The scary part is, I don't think he's a finished product yet. I feel like he lacks some patience and can read his blocks a bit better, so if that ever gets ironed out, the sky's the limit for him. He'll also hold up nicely as a pass blocker, which is something that young running backs tend to struggle with, but he should have no concerns. Obviously, Brock Bowers is the cream of the crop at the tight end position, but there's a few other guys that should carve out nice careers in the NFL. One that I like is Theo Johnson from Penn State. He absolutely has some limitations to his game, but I do think he has what it takes to have a long career at the next level. His 6'6", 259 pound frame is NFL ready, and his blocking highlights may be more exciting than his receiving highlights. As an inline tight end that's asked to block and be a receiver second, he can excel in that role. But even as a receiver, he's not terrible. He made a lot of catches up the seam, in the flat, or on crossers, and did a pretty good job after the catch. He also has a big catch radius with his height and 33 inch arms. When he reaches top speed, it's better than what you would expect. He even 
even ran a 4.57 at the combine, which is very respectable for 260 pounds. Talisa Fuwaga was one of those guys where the second I watched him, I was like, whoa, who is this? The right tackle from Oregon State is an absolute mauler and has really good technique. Although he only played tackle in college, there is some speculation he may be moved to guard due to his arm length, which is a bit on the short side. Not only is his technique great, but he has very high IQ and handles stunts like an NFL veteran. He has strong hands and understands leverage at a high level, especially in the run game. His concerns are arm length and sometimes he's a bit over aggressive, which could lead to penalties. I may prefer him at guard, but his mentality and technique should make him a fine player at the next level. Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan is one of the more intriguing edge rushers in this class. After a good senior bowl and even better combine, Neeland became a popular sleeper pick in this draft process. He loves the bull rush, but that's not his only move. He just plays a violent style of football and it's hard not to love it. His first step and low center of gravity also help him get by offensive linemen. His concerns are arm length, his change of direction could be better, and most of his production was against lower competition. His RAS score, which grades prospects based on athleticism from a 1 to 10 scale, was a 9.87. That ranks as the 22nd highest score out of over 1,600 defensive linemen who have been tested since 1987. Overall, he's a physically gifted player who, with more added to his pass rushing arsenal, could be a good starting defensive end in the NFL. After three years at Texas, Byron Murphy II worked his way into being a projected first round pick in this draft. Without his 6'1 frame and shorter arms, he's probably a no doubt top 15 pick in this class and maybe still could be one. Murphy is built like a guy who I was a big fan of last year and that's Kalijah Kansi who went to Tampa Bay. Murphy though had a better combine, is 20 pounds heavier and has longer arms than Kansi. His low center of gravity actually helps him in a lot of areas and he's rarely ever moved in the run game. If anything, he's the one moving people and throwing offensive linemen to the side. Some of the pressures he gets on just bull rushing are ridiculous and the way he sheds blocks in the running game looks too easy at times. He made Bruce Feldman's freaks list for his athleticism and he showed it at the combine putting up good numbers everywhere. Defensive tackle may be a devalued position in some GM's eyes but Murphy has a chance to be a real difference maker at the next level. Terion Arnold out of Alabama is the last name on this list. At 6 feet tall 189 pounds he'll most likely play outside corner at the next level but did play a lot of slot corner last season. He does a great job getting low in his back pedal, flipping his hips, and knows how to mirror receivers, especially early in the route. His zone instincts are better than most, but he does have the ability to play press as well. He's also extremely young, having just turned 21 in March. He does have a tough time shedding blocks from receivers on the outside, and sometimes takes a bit too long to react when receivers break on their routes. But overall, he seems like a high floor type of player who should be able to hold on to a role in the NFL, whether it's inside or outside. He also laid out some nice hits for a corner. Anyway, that's going to do it for this list of prospects I love in 2024. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll talk to you guys next time.